Hey guys, Anthony Beckham here. Welcome to the channel where real estate is life. Today is a very, very special episode where we're gonna be talking about net worth, why it's important and how you can grow yours. And stick around to the end because I'm actually gonna be breaking down each line item on my personal net worth sheet as a 25 year old real estate agent. So let's hop right into it. <laughs> here on the channel has been follow us on the journey to real estate millionaire. And I say that for a reason. I'm personally on a journey to becoming a millionaire through real estate and real estate investing. And I want to teach you guys how to do the same. So first of all, what is net worth? Net worth isn't necessarily the amount of cash you have in the bank, but simply put what you own minus what you owe your assets minus your liabilities. Assets are gonna include things like, of course, cash, any real estate that you have, retirement portfolio, stocks, uh, physical assets like even cars or art, or dare I say it, Bitcoin. Liabilities are your debts, like what you owe against your assets, like say home loans, credit cards, maybe student loans, or loans against vehicles. You might be thinking, why is tracking my net worth even important. Well, I like to think of your net worth more as your financial scoreboard. It shows where you're at, what you can work on, and of course, what you track tends to grow or improve over time. Now, if you fill out your own personal net worth tracker after this video, and you find that your net worth is actually at zero or in the negative, while that may sound ridiculous, don't feel bad about it. It's more common than what you think. And frankly, that's what this channel is all about, helping you figure out how you can actually get that up through business and real estate. Now, there's three ways to grow your net worth. One is making more money, which of course that's what we talk about all the time on this channel. Second would be to either pay off or just decrease your debts. And third would be to like this video and subscribe to the Real Estate is Life channel. We're gonna break down which assets you want to have, which liabilities you definitely don't wanna have as we go through my personal net worth sheet, going over my own assets and liabilities. So let's hop into it. So right now I have 389,733 in cash. Now, typically you wouldn't wanna have that amount of cash on the sidelines. But of course, as you know, last year, 2020 coronavirus, the whole thing was crazy. Um, our business accounts got dwindled down to just about nothing. And I actually had to pay my employees out of my personal account one month. Yeah, it, it got that bad. This time we're doing it right. You know, a lot of that money came from honestly, just the last six months. I ended up with 101 sales. Plus we did a couple of flips last year that allowed me to save up that amount of cash so that we can keep heavy reserves. And of course, you're gonna see me investing a lot of that money here in 2021. Next, we're gonna go over my appreciating assets, including real estate, which of course is my favorite. I have $3,582 in my 401k retirement account. Now, I know that's not a whole lot. It isn't something I've paid a lot of focus to, but it was something that was set up by my old employer before I started my real estate business. And they actually offered a 401k match. So basically up to a certain amount, whatever I put in, they were willing to match. If your employer offers 401k match, you definitely wanna hop on that because every dollar they put in for you is basically free money. We love free money. Next, I have $261 in my Weeble account. So obviously that's something I've just kind of started messing around with and I've got it up $61. I started off with 200, so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, but this is probably something we could work on together. I even have a link down below in the description where if you sign up for Weeble, you get a couple free stocks, which then you can add to your asset column. And now onto my favorites. The home I live in has a value right now of around $269,000. I also have a rental property that's valued at $189,000. Real estate is one of the greatest investments you can make and one of the best investments to have in your asset column. Real estate tends to go up historically 3% or more 
every year, which when you think, you know, in my case, I have a half million dollars in real estate. If that goes up 3% this year, that means my net worth will go up 15,000 just based on appreciation. And of course, the more real estate you have, the bigger gain you're going to see every year. Now we're going to move on to my depreciating assets, which are assets that hold value, but actually depreciate or lose value over time. When building your net worth, you're going to want to focus on the appreciating assets like real estate in your stock portfolio versus depreciating assets, which would be something more like vehicles. First I have on this list is $17,624 for the value of my Honda CRV. After that, we have $17,873 as the value of my Nissan 370Z. And while it's not a lot, another $3,000 for my project Toyota Celica. And spoiler alert, I haven't told anybody yet, but this weekend I'm actually buying my dream car, which is gonna be added to this column. So make sure to subscribe to catch plenty of videos that are gonna be coming on that. So now it's time to go ahead and add those numbers up. Now, there was some things I left out. I have a few bucks and a couple different personal accounts that I didn't wanna track down. I have $500 hidden under my bed, and I also have a couple grand in my sports betting account now, which is a little side hustle that I've been doing. But I'm gonna leave that out. Some people would also put furniture and other physical assets like that, but for simplicity's sake, we're gonna leave all that out today. So let's get to adding. Oh, us $890,073. What? Damn. So I'm basically like already almost a millionaire, right? No, no, that's unfortunately, no, not exactly. Cause we have not added up my liabilities or my debts yet against those assets. So that's the less fun part, but let's go ahead and dive into that. So starting with my CRV, I owe $8,779 on that. I also owe another $6,031 on my Nissan 370Z. $1,168 on personal credit cards and $4,204 on my business credit card. Not to mention the $7,757 that are on my girlfriend's student loans. I personally don't have any, I wouldn't recommend them. And another $1,590 on my girlfriend's braces. All of those debts are my short-term liabilities. And as you could see, we could easily pay off most of those today if we wanted to. But whenever we look at debts like those against my two cars, and the reason why those still have some leverage is because I have loans on them that are less than 5%. For me, it makes sense to keep as much cash on hand that I can invest when you're looking at debts that are kept underneath that 5%. If you guys have been following the channel, you know that I made a 62.5% return on my money last year from a couple of real estate flips that we did, which of course is much bigger than the 5% interest that I'm paying on those car loans. In my opinion, any debts that you have that are over that 5% mark, you're gonna wanna focus on paying off as even the stock market has a historical 7% return each year, but anything that's under that 5%, you're gonna wanna keep it because you can invest that money and essentially make the difference in between the interest that you're paying on, let's say your car and the money that you're making off of your money if you're experiencing a higher than 5% return. We can go into greater detail on that on a later video. And before you guys slam me on the credit card debt, I have never once in my entire life paid interest on a credit card. Instead, I use the credit card to pay for things like groceries, gas, and other things I would have to buy anyway. But you know, now that I think about it, $1,168 does seem like a lot of groceries and gas this month, uh, especially because we're only halfway through the month. So I'll have to ask my girlfriend about that one. But it's the same thing for the business. There's about $10,000 in recurring business expenses I have between the different software that I use and my CRM, website, advertising that I just charge to the credit card every month and then pay off 
in full. And the reason why I do this is because the credit card companies usually have a one to 2% basically bonus for every dollar that you spend. So say that I spend $10,000 a month on my business credit card and they give me a 1% bonus. Well, you know, there's a hundred bucks that I otherwise wouldn't have. So as long as you have the self-control not to go off and slide that credit card on things that you shouldn't be buying, it can be a great way to make a little bit of passive income on what you would have been purchasing anyway. If you have debts that you wanna get rid of, credit card debt would be usually where I would start in any other high interest debt that you have. Again, probably ignoring the under 5% so you can go out and invest the difference. Because if you're watching this channel and you're learning how to invest in real estate, you're probably gonna make more than a 5% return on your money. So that brings me to the next liability on my net sheet, which is gonna be the long-term debt that I have against my real estate. I have $162,398 owed on the home that I live in and another $98,087 owed against the rental property. Just so you know, I'm really struggling with these numbers. I got like the dyslexia thing where I get everything mixed up. So but I think I'm doing pretty good so far. This here is the same scenario. I could pay off a lot, if not all of the debt that's against my real estate, but I have 30 year loans on both my properties that are locked in around 3% interest. To me, this is basically free money. Whenever you think about the appreciation, when you think about even just inflation is 3%. I mean, the banks aren't making any money on this and I can go out and leverage my greatest assets that have improved in value, you know, by tens of thousands of dollars over the last handful of years by using this low interest leverage. Not to mention, I have someone that's actually paying off one of those houses for me, my renter in the rental, and I still make a little bit of money after all the bills are paid on that every month. So let's go ahead and do some math and come up with that net worth number. We've got our $890,073 in the asset column, and now we're gonna go ahead and subtract the total liabilities. If we take that $890,073 and we subtract the depressing liability column of $290,014, we end up with a net worth of $600,059. That net worth number puts us just a tad over 60% of the way there to that million dollar number. My goal is for us to hit that by the end of 2021. And of course, I'll be documenting it every step of the way so that you guys can come along for the ride. We've also got another goal to hit 10,000 subscribers here on the channel in 2021. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on the journey to real estate millionaire. I felt like this was a super important episode to do where I could just get transparent and open the curtains and show you guys my net worth, you know, especially being here at the beginning of 2021, I want you guys to see where we're at so you can follow along, hopefully implement the things that I'm teaching on this channel and watch your net worth grow right alongside my own. If you guys have any questions about how you can increase your net worth or wanna dive in deeper on any of the topics that we discussed today, go ahead and comment below. Let me know what those questions are. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Real Estate Is Life channel. And we will see you guys on the next one. See ya.